some people simply accept the long lines and hassles of department store shopping. The smart ones save time and money at Caesars Bay, a discount department store of over 500 independent merchants. Caesars Bay, it's shopping the easy way. Get ready for courteous individual attention and discounts of up to 50% off and more. Take a break in our international snack bar. So don't let them hand you a line. Come on over to Caesars Bay. Caesars Bay, it's shopping the easy way. Telling your best friend her boyfriend is a jerk. Next Donahue. Let me tell you something. Enjoy this show because it ain't going to last much longer. <laughs> And thank you for staying up later. I'm Tom Snyder for Bob Costas. Uh, there is nothing wrong with your set. And my guest tonight is Howard Stern, who is radio in New York and Philadelphia. And if Howard Stern has his way, we'll soon be radio in Los Angeles and much of the rest of the country. His ratings are tops right now in New York and Philadelphia. Uh, Howard Stern is also seen syndicated nationally on television, mostly in the late night time period, and also on the superstation WWWWOR. Howard, it's a pleasure to meet you after all these years of mutual attack. <laughs> well, and let me just say something. It's, it's thrilling to hear you say my credits, because it actually sounds like I've, I've got something going on. It's very, very impressive. And you think you don't? Uh, no, it's very exciting. You know, a TV show. Barely a TV show, but a TV show nevertheless. And um, also, I'm in Washington radio. Audiences who uh, have read about you have heard you defined as the king of shock radio. Are we going to work out this thing between us first before you go into the series? There's nothing interview? between us, pal. We do this half hour and we never see each other again. No, no, there? no, no. There is something between us. No, there's us. nothing between us. You have bad rap me before. I've read various newspaper articles where you have said that you don't like what I do. Isn't that true? I have said that I am not a fan of your format. I do not care for what is called shock radio. And you listen to me? Because I can't listen to you in Los Angeles. But do you think I'm shock radio? I think, you think that that's an. Uh, do you think that that's a. Now, do you want to come over here? Or no, wait a second. I'm curious. <laughs> Just a minute. That, you think that that's an appropriate title for what I do, shock radio? No, I don't. But that's the handle that you wear in the press. You no. know, I read newspapers too, and they define Howard Stern as shock radio. Hey, listen, Howard. But then for, you hear my format. I'm for, curious. Wait a second. I'm curious. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Just You're a an second. intelligent and man. For though. years, they they read they ran stories about Snyder that he was controversial, that he was abrasive, that he would bring guests into the studio and chew them up. Do you feel chewed up at this point? Well, I'm hardly getting a word in edgewise. Well, but the point I'm trying to make is you, yeah. we all read things in the paper, and when you have something to say, you will. No, but uh, you but lived in New York. Now, calm down, Tom, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Hey, he hasn't been on network television a long time. He's got a lot to say, and he wants to get it all done. No, in all serious, and it's good to see you on television again, even though you hate this, right? I don't think that you're shock radio. It's just that the kind of things that you and others do on radio, I am not a fan of. Now, that doesn't make You don't think I'm funny? That, no, do you no, think I'm I funny? I don't think you're funny. And what don't you I like about it? I watched the cassette of your show last night, the television show. You had lesbian dating game. You talked about the Sammy Davis cancer man, you know. Right. Now, this, this is all funny stuff to some people. Pal, to me, it's not funny. Now, that does not make you unfunny. It makes me... Uh, uh, makes you out of touch. Out of touch. Okay. Right. okay. And I admit that. All I will right. admit right. that I'm You've out of touch older, but you with know the something? Howard I think Stern you do. kind of humor. I think you do like me. I think that you're afraid to admit that you like me. Because there's something inside us all, something evil inside us all that likes me. There's no question about it. For right. example... 20 minutes after the shuttle went down in 1985, there were jokes all over the broadcast newsrooms of this country about the, about the space shuttle challenger, that's right, that's all right? right. Uh, when the war started between Iraq and the United States and the coalition, there were jokes all over the map about the war. That's right. But in, you see, to me, in my out-of-date, out-of-touch, out-of-sync, out-of-mind way of thinking, those jokes we tell in the dressing room, yeah, but we, see, we don't tell them out here. You are so wrong. And, 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 by you the way, are so wrong because, first of all, what my radio show and my television show are about are not about making jokes about tragedies. That is not the idea of the show. What the idea of the show is to convey real honesty mm -hmm. on the air. Okay. To get away from the phony type of broadcasting where someone sits there and bites. You mean like this? Bites, you mean like this? Well, in a way, yeah, where yeah. people bite their tongue and are afraid to say anything. Uh, I mean, there are a million things. I, if I was interviewing you, I'd love to know about your days at NBC. I'd love to know your problems with NBC. But I'd love to know also, your beefs with NBC. But, but would you also want to know my toilet habits? Uh, yeah, I would. Really? Yeah. What Jesus. are your toilet hey, habits? I want to tell you, Howard, yeah. you've got to get out more, pal. No, I, I would like to know about you. You spend too much toilet. time at home. I, mean, I don't know anything about you. I don't know your sex life. I don't know things about you. I'm curious, but you could always refuse to answer. But that would be interesting to see you refuse to answer. All right, all right. This but is like two mental patients arguing. <laughs> it's 1.30 something in the morning here. They came in to plug my new CD. I don't believe it. Wait a minute. Yeah. Let me get this no, out wait. of the no, way. No, no, let me do the plug. He's, no, because you'll take too long. No, I won't. 
<laughs> I won't take I swear, trust me. You're going to love this. Oh, this is unreal. This Thank is, God they fired this man. This, this, this is, uh, it's either fired or I left. Whatever what did you, you want. Did what, you leave? Or whatever did you, you want us to read in the paper. Right. This is the new CD of things that you never heard on the radio. And once you listen to it, you'll know why. That's okay? not true. What that tape that you're holding, crucified by the FCC. Not available in record stores, first of all. That's because, and there's a reason. And everything that is on that CD has been banned by the United States government. They say that that stuff is too dirty for you to listen to on the radio. I released it for a reason. Right. A, to make a profit. R okay, good. And B, for the public <laughs> to uh, hear it and say, wait a second, I, you know, what the hell is the government going after here? So I set up a phone line. Can I give the phone number? Why would you give the One phone? One time. Give me a plug, huh? They're going to blip it out anyway. They w would they really? Of course what, they would. What, to order the tape? That's, if, what, why if, do people come on this show if you can't get a plug if, off? If you came, hey, if you came Where on is here, Bob Costas? <laughs> I want to talk to him. He let you give a number. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Give the damn... really a pain in the ass. Give the damn... Give the damn number. One... Stern. Go back to your little interview. L let me... Let me... Go let ahead. me, let go me ahead, just try something here. Yeah, go ahead. Word association? You define yourself as a, uh, believe me, if I started with word association and Howard Stern, they couldn't put that on. Uh, you're a broadcaster. I've read that, you know, you like doing radio in the morning. You like being number one. You aspire to do television. And you know, Howard, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I did that. Everybody does that. What's your definition of broadcasting? I mean, your dad was in this business. He had a recording studio in the New right. York area. So you've been around broadcasting since you were a kid. Right. What, what do you define this as? First of all, my father was barely in this business. It was frightening how barely my father was in this business. If only I had had a father who was successful in this business, it might have gone a little easier. Secondly, the way I define broadcasting is my father. Oh, my father. I don't think, I don't, on his best year, I don't think he made $25,000. But uh, I'm not going to be a rich man because when he dies. Because he didn't have a Costas program to come on and hold up the damn videotape and hawk the numbers. That's right. But, uh, but he asked my definition of broadcasting. I don't have a definition of well, broadcasting. But when you got your first job, what did you want to do with your career as a radio I guy? I wanted to be on radio. My goal in life was to be on radio and do a goofy show, to go on the okay. air and entertain people. You know, when I was a kid, I'd go sometimes into work with my father, and we'd be on the Long Island Expressway going into New York, and it would be 7 o'clock in the morning, and there'd be back-to-back -to -back traffic. Gotcha. No one could move. And for two hours, the guy's stuck in his car, and there's nothing funny, nothing entertaining on the radio. I used to sit there and go, if there was something good on the radio, if there was something fun to listen to, people would just, I mean, people would worship you. They would thank you. And that's what happens when I walk through the streets. People just thank me for giving them something. You, Tom, don't get into it because you, of course, have limousines and chauffeurs and things like this, and you don't have to you see, you commute to work. Right, now and when you what, commute to what? work... You need something entertaining to listen to. Just a minute. Tom, stop pontificating on my show. No, no. <laughs> I'm here for plugs. Uh, you know, you talk about me in the limousines. I walked over here from a hotel today. We're paying... Uh, bravo, bravo. Oh, oh. But does the audience know that Howard Stern's makeup person preceded him here by a half an hour today? Right. Okay. That Howard Stern's makeup person was very concerned that Mr. Stern's Avion water was ready when he got to the well, studio. Well, look at me. Of but course, someone thinks I need a makeup person. Howard, you want all the trappings. Well, of course I do. You want limousines. But I don't deny that. You sure do. You, do. you make fun of me because. And you... what is wrong with wanting those things? But you make fun of me for wanting it or for having had no, it. No, Howard, I... you want the same things everybody I else want them, wants. I want it, but I you want to make a million dollars. You want to sell touch. your record. I accuse you of being out of touch. You, you asked you... me what my theory of broadcasting is. Guys like you want to broadcast in a phony style. You want everything nice. You want you know, nothing, nothing provocative. You just want to go along. Everything should be fine. No one should shock anybody with the truth. Nobody should do anything. Everything should be just fine. All the network executives should be happy. To me, the exciting part of broadcasting is turning on that listener in his car mm -hmm. who's trapped in his car for two hours, and then he finally makes it to work, and you know what? He doesn't want to leave his car because he doesn't want to miss what we're doing. And what do you want to happen with the Howard Stern show on television? What do you want the viewer to come away with? I want the Howard Stern show on television to go away, quite frankly. I know, it's a lot of work. It's just a tremendous amount of work, and, I, you know, we only have two full-time people on my show. You know, I was watching your show on videotape last night, right. the most recent version, and as I watched it, I said to myself, how does Letterman stay on the air in the face of this competition, right. in the face of this brilliance? 
Um, this brilliance, by the way, just pulled an eight rating every week and beat Saturday Night Live every week oh, it's been on. Oh, please, don't give me ratings. Don't give me beat Saturday Night Live. Well, you know, I'll, you know take give a look me, at the ratings. Give me what you want the viewer to have. The viewer doesn't care about the ratings. The viewer wants to have a laugh. The viewer wants to be entertained. You are so combative. In fact, you must want this job very badly. I don't want My this job. My God Almighty, don't why don't you relax? Job. Your anal retentive. <laughs> We're crying I'm out loud. What does the guy want? I'm going to drive up a bridge when I get out of this show. I'm anal compulsive. You are you, intense. Get, get, get what it is right. it? Do you don't like your radio? He says to me, I swear to God, we're about to sit down to do the show, and he says to me, I don't want to do this ever again. I don't want to be on network television. This looks like a man who's pretty well driven to get himself back on network television. Do you I, agree? I'm trying to give the viewers a profile of the Howard Stern they can't profile? hear on radio. This or... is like an interrogation. Why don't you try to be nice? What the hell's the matter with you? Yes, Howard. Calm down. Now, what was the question again? How you feeling, Howard? I can't figure out how old you are. That's my problem. <laughs> I don't know what it is is going on here. What happened when you were an anchor man for a while? Will you, you have stop? had more career. Someone ought to interview this man. What am I doing I here? I have done more farewells than the student prince. You're I know, right. but you're doing all right. Look, you make a good living. You, um, you asked me a question, and I forget what it was. Yes, I did ask all right. you a well, You were being very provocative. I've forgotten what the question was. Oh, I blew it. Go no, ahead. Nothing at all to do with no, you what were you saying? me. Just wondering about your television show and, you know, how... The television show is very successful for the I, same I, reason... I, I, I have to do the commercial now. We can't have your... Can phone. you hold up my tape? I'm not holding up Give the up phone number. Tape. Give me a break. Welcome to the Miller Lite 3 billion case celebration. And here's your host, John Madden. Almost 3 billion cases sold in just 17 years. And in honor of America's favorite light beer, we're going to pick our favorite light beer commercial. I vote for mine. I vote for me. You know, uh, you made one day of my life especially miserable for me. Go ahead. It was the day that, I, you know, I got fired or left. Uh, a, a news anchor job in New York right. to take what you... Okay, I got fired. I knew you were hostile for some reason. But this, I knew you were hostile. Wait a second, let me take you off... You couldn't on, handle what? What couldn't Tom handle? What couldn't you handle? Oh, what are you, a baby? Tommy couldn't handle the fact that Howard said that Tommy didn't like Oriental people and made fun of them and was a racist. And do you now, think that, that I... Do you think that someone takes that for real when I say that? Yes, Coming I from do. my mouth. You, yes, think that, you think that people are learning from me. Hey, Howard, let me tell you, you think something. That I, yeah, you think that people are turning to me hold for, for I, opinions now, on Tom Snyder. Let me tell you something. And I said you don't like Oriental people hold in on. a serious vein. Now, hold on a second. Tom, you're hallucinating. I have people who listen to me, I know far fewer than you on radio, yeah. who think I'm sending them messages over the air to come and visit me, to have dinner with me. So you're going to blame me for those people? Oh, of course I'm not, but I'm saying to you that what you don't realize is that what you broadcast to people, some, yeah. And I will grant you it's a minority take as the gospel truth. And if you say that I am a racist, or... So no, all, wait, humor, wait, wait, wait. all humor should stop because Just. Tom feels bad for a couple of mental patients. I'm hostile. We're going to stop having entertainment, sarcasm, humor of all kinds because there are three or four people in the audience who can't Boy, get I the joke. Boy, I've got to tell you, you see it your way and your way alone, don't you? And, of, and you know what, I'm right. And you only wish you thought like me. Hey, listen, you know, in a lot of ways, I do what think like you. What hurt you that I said You know you what's great about you, Howard? Yeah. What hurt you? Let me tell you what's really great about you. Yeah. Okay, and then, but let me just make this one point. What's you it going to be like when they turn off the camera and i got to deal with this guy? What, uh, then they'll probably want to take more publicity stills of us smiling and holding each other's hands since we're all doing bull broadcasting Okay, here, okay? go ahead. Yeah. Well, Ooh, forgive yeah. me, I said bull on the air. <laughs> yeah. well, what are they going to do, take tomorrow out of here? I'm getting to you. So anyway, uh, yeah, you're Boy, right. I really did hurt you. No, but what I'm getting to here is it's like, you know, people who write about you in magazines and newspapers and they say derogatory things about you that aren't true. There are people who read them, Howard, and they believe them. And there are people who hear you say... Sammy Davis wanted to kill himself. That but I am of course, a... and that's a positive Wait message. Wait a second. Why are you that yelling at me? That is a positive because you're yelling at me. I'm that's a positive you yell message. First. You yell first. And that's you, you, and I'm the one who's supposed to be a maniac. Admit it. You yell first. This is a positive message when you tell and people when not they to hear smoke. You say these things. They think you know. Howard Stern said Sammy Davis wanted to kill himself. Howard Stern said A B C D, and they take it as gospel. You know, there, there are people... But of who, course, what, do you think there's something wrong with what I've just said? Wait a second. Yeah, I do. You don't okay. think Sammy let Davis me, Jr. was killing himself with cigarettes? Uh, I don't think... Are you out I, of your I, mind? I don't think he wanted you to. You have lost your mind. I don't think he wanted to. You know what is happening? At least you I are had, getting old, at least and I you are had, afraid of your own death. At least I you had one You cannot cope with the lose. fact that you're going to die someday. You think you're going to go on forever. You've really lost your mind. You have lost your mental capabilities.
hostile. You're sitting here thinking that people out take humor touch, seriously. Out of date. When Robin Williams off makes off the air. When Robin Williams makes a joke, do you think people get the joke? Do you think people get the joke? If you're comparing yourself to Robin Williams, yeah, I'm not the one who's out of touch. Okay. All right. So now, you think that Robin no, Williams I, is funnier than I am? I don't am. think anything. I'm just trying. You wouldn't I, know I'm what's funny, Tom. Trying, let me let me give you your logic back. Yeah. We have a man that goes. To the DMV. Do you think I'm the president of the United Just States? A minute. Just Do you th you're going to give me some Vietnam reference now? No, I'm not. All right, let me ask you something. I want to give you your logic back if you can hold still just 30 seconds Go ahead. on your show. All right, That's let's all hear I your am. logic. And okay. then let me respond to your logic. Uh, no, no, l let you put me down for trying to display it to you. Let me hear your logic. A man goes to the DMV in Los Angeles. All right. And he buys a license number and an address of a movie star with whom he's infatuated. Yeah. Her name is Rebecca Schaefer. Go ahead. And he goes to the door of her apartment and he shoots her. Yeah. Now, by your logic, we, uh, so what? We should stop selling Why? all information? How dare you say that? We should stop selling How all information from the DMV you because are this kook. one crackpot? You are a kook? crackpot. This you are crackpot? such a crackpot and you're so full of it that it's frightening. No, you're, you're the one You are blaming a disc I'm, jockey I, for the ills of society. No, I'm not. And no. that shows your mental incapacity. You're not a disc jockey. You're you an entertainer. You are nuts. And you're a broadcaster. An entertainer, whatever you, you want to call me. you take the responsibility of broadcasting Do you think so I'm lightly, doing a serious so show? So lightly that it's terrifying. No, I don't think you're doing a serious show. You think you are. You are a kook. Hostility. A kook who deserves to touch. be locked. Put you Jealousy. in a mental hospital. Locked up. Don't right. point that at me. You're a mental hospital. You are out of your mind. No, you're not. No, you're, no, you're really nuts, Howard. You really not. are. Oh, my God. You're turning me into you. Enjoy extra sugar-free... I call the line. We call the line. I call the line. Dial 1-900-446-GAL and instantly connect to beautiful people waiting to talk to you. It's live, private, and one-on-one. -on -one. So don't just sit there. Pick up the phone and dial 1-900-446-GAL. It's only $15 per call. Adults only. Call now. What kind of show is it? The guy <laughs> asks you questions, doesn't let you And respond. you won't answer them. You're like a sick dude. Man. You are a psychopath. Look at, look at, look at, he's laughing now. You are a psychopath. Look at, 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 come here, come on, come on, come on, come on. I just want to chase, I want to choke you, that's what I want to do. Where's Rebecca, I'm Rebecca Schaefer's murderer. Yeah, right there. Your family life, you know, people read uh, the Us magazine, they love gossip, they love uh, personal stories. Tell us about your family, your daughters, and what you and the family do, you know, for, for life. My wife and I have been married for 13 years. Congratulations, sir. I have slept with the same woman for 17 years. I go on radio on a regular basis, and I inform people of this because I think that this is a very moral thing to do to marry someone and stick with them and stick by them and make a partnership in life think that's shocking tom not at all i think that's very good you married I, I, no i'm not i would like you dump this, your wife uh, yeah, two or three times dumped her two or three times all left right, her yeah. without a quarter this is fast. mr morality he's worried about my morality if everybody sat and worried about themselves and their own morality tom's probably fornicating every night with different starlets out in hollywood and different genders too put that down go out and now leap up and say oh you know, do, do one of those. We're going to put you on the dating game. <laughs> not yours, you're not. Well, maybe you're well, ready he's for starting, it. He's starting to laugh again. All um, right, go ahead. Your, uh, but I think it's great that you have this side of your life that your listeners and that the viewers of your television program hear about. That's right. That they know in the midst of all the zaniness, all the humor, there is a reality to Howard Stern that they don't often see. Like you got kids, right? That's right. Yeah, and and you. you That's play. the reality of the radio show. Let me tell you something that my shows, my television or uh, radio show, deal with the realities of family life. It deals with raising two children. It's a father knows best from hell. What's been the toughest part of raising your two children? Well, for uh, it's kind of difficult when you uh, you happen to be on the when, radio. When you, you don't remember, highly, yeah, yeah. When you happen to be highly recognized, and uh, that's kind of interesting when you want to just go somewhere with your kids in a park and people come up. And, Example, you know, what happens in those situations? Well, what happens is a lot of people come up, they're thrilled about the show, they want to talk about the show, 
right. but you're trying to spend a little free time with your kids, and it's hard right. to pay attention when you're sitting there with, you know, Rebecca Schaefer's murderer in front of your face. So you're trying to, you know, you're trying to you, keep you that really all You've got a hang-up on that, don't you? Well, I mean, for God's sakes, to tell me that I'm responsible for I something like that. I didn't say you were. I yeah, said you're your kind of logic, logic, but... You're wacky. Why do you keep going back to it? So now you're, you're in... You're a shocking you're, gentleman. You're in the park with your daughters. What are their names? What is the difference? What, what do you want to date them now, Tom? They're seven and four for crying out loud. What's the importance? Emily and Deborah. All right. Two normal names. Not son of Satan. <laughs> you understand? Right. Very good. All I right. like that. Thank you. That's funny. Right. That's funny. Well, I'm glad you're, you're So uh, you're amused. in the park with Evelyn and Deborah. Right. Swings. Right. Senile. Doesn't, I tell him a name he still don't remember. Yeah, Doesn't know where I broadcast. Evelyn. Evelyn. Who names a child Evelyn? This is going to be really tough for you to believe. Yeah, go ahead. But really tough, but people used to know who I was, and they'd come over and interrupt playtime with my daughter, Annie, okay? Right. And you're right, it was a very, very difficult time. See, we're relating. Exactly. Isn't we're this We're trying nice? to get to know each other. All right, we're getting What to else in Howard, Stern, Howard Stern's life? What other, what other normalcies do you have in life that you share with all the people that listen to you and watch you? Oh, boy, Tom, this is some exciting interview. Well, I'll tell you something. This is well, it fun. sure beats being yelled at. I'll I tell see you that. Okay, so what is different and amusing about my no, wife, no, what's my no, life, my wife? Normal, normal. Well, I think I'm the one who doesn't I'm pay attention. I'm a man attention. who must go to bed at 8 o'clock every night because I get up at 4 in the morning, mm -hmm. and it doesn't leave a whole lot of time for me to have sex with my wife. All right. Okay. All that's, right. That's, Would man. you like to hear about that? Hey, wait. Let me do the act right. Oh, fair enough, sir. Okay. okay. There yeah, you go. go. <laughs> yeah, good, good. <laughs> let's yeah, move on. Yeah, yeah, let's. It doesn't leave me a whole lot of time. Do you realize how big I'm going to be in Los Angeles? And then when you and and Mrs. Stern go out, Mrs. Satan, yes, I'm sure that people come over and they want to, you know, touch you and 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 and. and Get they idolize they me. Worship. I am yeah, yeah, I'm right. a guy who keeps yeah. them entertained. Yeah. Yes, that's true. There's not a whole lot of celebrities in New York. So one of the things that's difficult about being Howard Stern... You don't smoke a cigarette anymore. Not anymore. No. All right, there you go. Yeah, I'm but missing I, that. But I still do the laugh. All right. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right. I thought the Dan Aykroyd thing was a scream. Fabulous. And that's what turned me on to you. Yeah. But you think it ruined your career? No, it didn't ruin my career You think it made you a joke it and made a buffoon? Me, um, it, hey, imitation is the sincerest form. Look at all the people that imitate your style on radio, That's coast true. to coast. That is all very right? true. Yeah. Okay. They all want to be Howard Stern. And what a but dream. They, but they're not funny, right. okay? They're not okay. inventive, all right. and they're not sincere. Well, That's they're... why you're the king. I'm the king. And they're nothing. And that's right. Okay. We are with Howard Stern, and, and you're going to watch the commercial, and, 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 and we're going to soul kiss now these messages. <laughs> I want to see this one. You are what is wrong with television. Uh, Bob Costas will be back on Monday, and I would thank Howard Stern, but that's phony. You know, that's that's polite stuff. And, well, and, how about being and, real and, and, and we, saying, I'm here for a plug, not to meet you or to sit and talk to you, and would you allow me the final plug one? Stern, would you allow me to say that I'm, this is the stuff the government banned, that they, you are opposed to censorship? There's nothing wrong with your set. Are you opposed to censorship? Sleep tight, America. Good night, everybody.